Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? Everyone! Welcome to Everyone Racers. It's a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of limit champ or lucky track dog league you run. SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips, tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough, and Chrissy, and Chrissy, I give you just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Tim. And I'm Mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Welcome to episode 358 of our podcast. Yes, we are going to talk about the 358 specs using either a Chevy 350, Chrysler 360, or a 340, or a Ford 351 with a very specific set of part numbers. 358 modifieds are slightly less powerful than the next premier big block modified, putting out over 500 horsepower. The smaller engines and slightly lower weights make the 358 modified the stepping stone for most up and coming dirt track racers. Oh, you thought we were going to do a Ferrari? Well, what's the fun in that? I didn't know anything yep. about those. That's terrifying, actually. <laughs> a you modified with 500 horsepower? That oh, yeah. never goes oh, straight. Do you, you want to die? You only turn. You only yeah. turn. Tracks. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Don't make a right. Die. Oh, they're, they're designed. I feel like Uncle Dave knows lives. exactly all about these things. Right? There's so many things that are so different than what we do. Like they stagger things on purpose to constantly make it go the other way. And yeah. it's just so different. Good for them, though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What you working on? Fantastic. Tim, what you working on? Well, um, I went to the Litchfield County Fair in Maine, and I haven't been to like a real fair in I can't tell you how long. It was it was super cool. They had uh, Good old demolition small town derby. Fun. Yeah, it really was like demolition derby, and and like they had a, a car show where they a bunch of antique cars did a lap around the circle of of the fairgrounds, and there was some cool stuff. And I'll post some of it up on uh, on the socials, but just a couple of highlights. There was something I'd never seen before, which is a 1936 LaSalle CV, which was a General Motors brand that was supposed to be between the Chevy and the Cadillac. So it was like a step down from Cadillac. Super cool looking car. It went by, I was like, what the heck is that thing? Um, there was a 1951 Crossley, which if you take like a red rider wagon and put like a body on top of it and then put five people in it, like that's what drove by. It's, it's the smallest little thing I've Those ever seen. It was, yeah. Oh, amazing. <laughs> it looks like, a, and I've got it. I've got it on a picture with like a normal car behind it. And you're like, it looks like, is somebody towing that? Like what? Yeah, what they look that? like normal size in the picture that Mental has yeah, yeah. googled. They it, without any context. I know. I'm trying like to find like a one with it with a, like another car nearby, and it's like yeah. a quarter scale. It's like a quarter scale car. They it's use because they used motorcycle engines. Yeah. 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 Super super cool. Super super cool. Um, they had a, a 1960s Mercury Monterey where the guy had like a whole Johnny Cash um, rad, like rat rod theme to it with the, the the exhaust came out of the side and had like an intricate side pipe on the rear quarter panels that came out. It looked like he, he literally took like parts from a bunch of different cars like the Johnny Cash song and, uh, and bolted it all onto this car. And it, it came out really, really cool looking. Um, and there was a 61 Ford Starliner, which is oh yeah, super rare car. One. Yep, super rare car. I think they only made that car for two years, 60 and 61. Um, so and, there's a lot. And of it was the first introduction of the 352, which was the first engine to have more horsepower, more than one horsepower per cubic inch. Mm -hmm. I learned that from super Chrissy cool. when she did the intro. It's <laughs> well, been a slow news day. I, 
I got to I got to live it. It was it was a beautiful car, beautiful car. Um, and the highlight of uh, of the fair was that there's a local tractor company, Waterman Tractor, and he built a kitty sized tractor pedal tractor and a pull sled and they had weight classes for boys and girls on this little pedal sled tractor sled set up where they would go tearing down the thing you know and and they'd measure it out it had like the the flag would kick if they got to the full i think it was about 58 feet for a full pull and they had the announcers and there was it's probably a hundred people watching these kids just cheering them on. It was, it was so fun. It was so fun. So the, uh, the, the, the Litchfield fair, I highly recommend it. It was super, super cool. Super cool. Yeah. Just, yeah just, it was just like that. I mean, the, the, the guy had the, the chain driven weight where the weight would move further and further forward on the sled, the farther they went. I mean, it was, and these are it pedal tractors like, too. Which, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And they gave out they gave out a pedal tractor to the winner. Whoever won um, got a pedal tractor to take home. So it, it was really neat. Like just, <laughs> like, oh, she's gonna get the oh, almost. I thought she was for sure she was gonna get the full pole. All right. <laughs> yeah, corn corn fed America. Uh, it just it felt awesome <laughs> pulling out of there. Uh, what fried food did you eat? Because that's that's not uh, mandatory. Yeah, because if you don't, if you go to a fair and you don't eat something fried, especially if it's something that maybe you never thought of frying, like an Oreo, a Twinkie, chocolate covered bacon, cheesecake, beer, well, Pepsi, all, all things, butter. all things that yeah. I've eaten deep fried at state fairs. So I went, I went with the traditional New England route, and I had uh, fish and chips and mm. fried scallops, and then I had a giant ice cream waffle cone so i did okay. i did the fair things yeah i did the fair things i'll allow it, it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> when is the last time you were at a fair chris oh i don't know nope but i went to them in i went to them in all kinds of fun places like montana oh, sure. so that would have been amazing yeah yes. been a long time. that's okay does it anyway that sounds like a great anyway time, Tim. yes Tim, you ready to do a road trip? Yeah, yeah. I am uh, I am very ready to do a road trip. Ready or not, here I come. So Friday, we are uh, heading back to California. So we're doing a, uh, a little four-day trip back across the country. Um, first stop is, uh, is going to be, uh, I think we just set it up today. I think we're going to get to Buffalo, and then we're going to go to Omaha, and then Salt Lake City, and then California. So... 15 when hours we, is the worst one. When we when you sign off, I will give you the name of Vicky's Aunt's restaurant in Omaha. And you can get yourself some quality Mexican food. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I'd love that. The wife would love that too. She's a huge Mexican food fan, so that'll be that'll be good after a 15-hour day. Get some chow. <laughs> All right. Um and then other than that, I'm just getting uh getting itchy. So, uh we had we had this as part of a, a main topic and fiberglass is, is where I'm at. So I'm doing some boat repair, um, doing a canoe repair. So, you know, I've got, uh, I've got all of the fiberglass everywhere right now. So I'm, I'm moving on to gel coat tomorrow. So the, the worst is behind me. <laughs> Has it been successful so far? Yes. Yes. It is not my first rodeo. Right. I had to, <laughs> I had a, I, bu I bought a 69 Corvette and, uh, and the guy that I bought it from ripped the, the floor mounts of the seat out because they didn't do a metal floor pan until like 71. So I had to cut chunks of the floor out and reinforce it with a bunch of stuff. So doing it standing up is way better than laying on your back and having it all fall on you. <laughs> so this, is, this you was much better. Either, either way, it's still miserable. Fiberglass is just <laughs> miserable. Yeah, for Perfect sure. Sound too. Oh. All right, mental. Cool, cool. What are you up to? So uh, I am doing, you know, race recovery. Uh, just getting back, and I'm doing race prep because I'm leaving. Probably as our listeners are listening to this, I will be whipping my way to High Plains Raceway, where I am uh, running with Tom and 
uh, Jan Webb and their whole family team. We've got a great theme. It's going to be awesome. Taking the Mercedes? Taking the RV. Ah, the Mercedes would have been perfect. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Eat up the miles. Well, hey, oh, it's yeah. nice you have your RV back. You were without this RV that you owned for so long. It's like I a forgot year. you had it, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And even okay. now, is it your third trip with that now? Is I'm sorry. What was what was the question, Chrissy? Is it is it sufficient? Is it is it working? Is it working? It's, it's those are two different <laughs> questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. Sorry. Yeah. No. No. It uh, Better like than the, tent. The, the major components are working. I still haven't figured the the self levelers. I haven't had a chance to repair yet, and I think that's causing the slide out problem. But uh, you know, the heat works, the AC works, the fridge works. So all okay. of that. Yeah. And right. uh, I, I I replaced the light. It's got a real door lock on it now, so you can actually just open it and close it. And yeah. So. Okay, so that's sufficient. I I call that sufficient. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. you know it's 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 a mental uh, it's a mental vehicle. It's a valid question. <laughs> you know, do you have four wheels? Are you just gonna lean? Yeah. Well, four wouldn't be enough on that. So. No, it is not. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the answer was, was that's all I have. Yes, then that'd be a problem. Yeah, exactly. Just doing doing wheelies everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Oh, oh well. Uh, Chrissy, what have Chris, you been doing? Oh, what am I doing? I, I was not racing. I uh, I spent the weekend hanging out with the fam. So uh, my nephews were over at my parents' house, so I spent time with them. Uh, I taught my nephew how to jack up his car. And so he has a little, it wasn't even a little Tykes car. It's like a car that you had like a push, like you could push the kid on the back. And my dad threw a bottle jack into the driveway and said, here. So we learned how to jack it up, and then we learned how to undo it. And... Um, Yes, and then all my friends decided to hassle me about how there was no jack stands. Um, I'm not even sure how I would make that happen. Um, oh yes, you should. This is, this is this is how this is how you know you have the, good friends. The car is only it's only is tiny. So um, yeah, so then he decided to drag over a chair and sit in the chair while he was jacking it up, and I'm like, oh, that's not really how you do it. Uh, so the car Did wasn't you eat, big enough. Eat to chips do. while he was doing all the work, or. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was the teacher because he doesn't really know how to do it. So because he kept saying up, Chrissy, make it go up. And I was like, OK, you have to jack it up. And then he's like, all right, now down. <laughs> he's like, OK. So, I mean, and this is like a legit normal car jack. So it's like a little bit difficult to, to you know, for kids to understand how you undo this, this secondary, you know, <laughs> screw tight. I, I just love anyway. Chrissy, Chrissy, make it go up. Chrissy, make it make go, it go down. up. Yeah, that's exactly it's, how honestly want, yes. that's what we all start to sound like Saturday after like our fourth beer, you know, <laughs> at the track. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes. So, uh, yeah, they're hanging up with the nephew, nephews uh, two and four. So that was a good time. Uh, but uh, Chris was at the race. What were you up to other than the race? I uh, prepped the rear window of the Porsche to re-glue it and reinstall it. Just to scrape it off all the old junk. And I've replaced the O-rings on the fuel injectors and fuel pressure regulators for the boat. So hopefully that solves the low temperature, low speed stumbling problem. I think it had an air leak through there. We shall see. Yep. Can't wait to drive it with it. the window yeah. in tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Get we yeah. can drive with a window. Yay. No, no window. <laughs> cool. That's right. It's not too cold about? these mornings. In the Porsche. Oh, yes. Having the back one in the Porsche. Yes, absolutely. That will be nice. Sure. Great. Great. There's no time. All right. All right. So you've got Lawrence Hodge. He's over at Jalopnik, and he is covering what might very well be the first casualty of what you're seeing in the recent YouTube shuffle. One of the largest automotive brands uh, from the last decade is, of course, was or, sorry, was founded by the late Ken Block, and that is Hoonigan. Last year, the company merged with a wheel company, 
and then acquired an off-road performance company for $50 million. More recently, it has lost several of their biggest personalities on YouTube, resulting in a decline of one of their major income resources. And as a result of all of that, they have filed for bankruptcy with $1.2 billion in debt. So it's a chapter 11 bankruptcy and they have revealed how in debt that they were. They are hoping to restructure that debt and keep the company going. Hodge points out that the departure of big personalities also lies with what we saw from Donut and Car Throttle as both of those media companies were acquired by venture capital firms. So as this is starting to go wrong, and if you've seen James Pumphrey, he's got his own channel now and uh, Alana's King, they've all, and they kind of explain what goes on with these sorts of things where creators no longer get to create and it becomes about the bottom line. So that's a, a, a prediction, I think, is you're going to see a lot of these former big names go. That's, that's hard to say a term for what they're going to do. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Bummer. Crap. No, really. Well, oh, I do. I do. Ha ha. Uh, yeah, I closed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I should record that. We'll do that again. <laughs> That'd be a good one, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're angry about Hoonigan filing for bankruptcy, you could join another gentleman who is uh, one of the angry people on the roads, but no one is quite as angry as this pickup truck owner whose truck was being towed in New York this weekend. Owen Bellwood from Jalopnik tells us how it went down. Instead of letting the tow truck driver drive off with their Chevy pickup, the owner instead fought off the tow truck driver and then proceeded to steal the vehicle and driving off in a fit of rage, as you do. The dramatic events unfolded in Sunset Park uh, in New York this weekend when the black Chevy pickup was hitched onto the tow truck nose high in the air ready to be removed but when the owner of the pickup was having none of it as according to local news outlet 12 the truck's owner drove down the street and hit every car along the way nearly ripping his own door off uh the the truck is destroyed and he would have likely gotten away if he didn't turn the street corner and then promptly crash into a city bus with the tow truck. He then made his way off on foot. The driver has not yet been identified by authorities, but we soon will find out all of the fun things about this very angry gentleman. There is nothing <laughs> least... that says standing up for yourself, like destroying your own $70,000 Chevy. Good so, on you. Hang on. If they haven't been able to identify the guy, how do they know this was his truck that mm. was being towed and not some opportunistic thief saying two for one? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, my bet is, my bet is, yeah, is that uh, like they just that. haven't released the guy's identity and they're letting it, they're letting everybody, you know, oh, dude, you're so busted. Because everybody, every, everybody that uh, he hit his, that hit his car on the way by, everybody's car that got hit by his on the way by oh, yeah, is all you know, ready to beat him up. Yeah. So, like yeah. as in a second here, when you see it, like as it goes down there, yeah, the, the owner Clunk. of that car is mad. The owner of yep. like the fourth car down there is mad, you know, yep. Look, eh. Where's this jabroni? Shit. I'm gonna I'm gonna clock him. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's I that's an the alpha video. that oh, got his mirror smoked. smashed. He's yeah, smoking. smoke the alpha. I yeah. I watched this video like six times and I counted six cars that he oh. he made contact with. Not, not including counting the bus. bus. <laughs> <laughs> not counting the oh. bus. <laughs> a bus in New York City. Chris was just yeah. would quit his job if that was part of, like the insurance on that. Like what? I really the insurance well, no, on this, this one whole is great case. because it's it's in the process of a crime and it's an intentional act. Because yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure say, the insurance nope. company is going to go. Nope, nope, oh, nope, nope. Got it's, it. It's called yeah, a felony. Yeah, yeah. No How did you enjoy the, the last? Pretty well. Yeah. How did you enjoy the last vehicle you'll ever own? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, and here, here's probably like, no yeah. license either. Right. As the video as the video keeps going, they just showed like the aftermath. I mean, seriously, this dude's. He should have just let him tow it because this homeboy's truck is just absolutely wrecked. 
Uh, okay, here's someone uh, no one was expecting. Work on that Dude one, with so. a pickup, black pickup truck, goes on a you know, ridiculous rage fueled <laughs> rampage. Who uh, knew? Who knew? Yeah. Oh goodness. Hmm. Amazing. Oh well. Hey, in better news, do you dream of the salt and setting your own land speed record? But you don't think you have the car? Well, sure you do. Well. You probably don't, really, but the infamous 1959 Pontiac Bonneville from Full Metal Jacket Racing just claimed the new fastest Lemons car record. This last week, the 59 Bonneville set a new uh, record at the Salt Flats for Lemons cars. And the linked video in the show notes shows both the 133.4 mile per hour run on the one mile course and the 146.15 mile run on the two and a quarter mile course. Wow. The previous record, Mike Myers team Tiny Vet Opal, which was 117. Wow. It's a glorious yep. sounding Go. video because you guys remember when you were at Button Willow a couple of years ago, that Bonneville. That car oh, it looks is, great. Yes. And so they spent, it needed a few more, you know, uh, they were trying to get into the 150 mile club. They didn't quite make it. But yeah. Mm. There are a couple so the, of lemon cars out there that I think could do that. Like, tatas for example that thing rips you i don't know i I feel like the old bustle back might run into some aerodynamic brick walls (laughs) still at least the bottom big old v8 and a (laughs) six-speed yeah (laughs) and jet wings (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i think the only reason they did this is because they can't keep the car running for more than 20 minutes on a racetrack. So <laughs> they figured that they might as well try a top oh, speed record. Sorry, Mingus. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Tim said that, Phil. I'll see you at the end of the month. I'm bringing you the Omega. We're still tight, bro. We're good. We're good. All right. <laughs> All right on other car, uh, let's talk about some other cars. Did you hit the 800 million mega millions jackpot? If so, no. head over to Racing Junk. You didn't? Oh, darn. Uh, Sorry, get yourself a new whip. Oh, look. It is a 2016 C7 Corvette Trans Am race car. It has a 358 CI engine. Oh, look at that. Um, not to mention other cool st- t- um, TA stuff. But if, do you know what it doesn't have? Pictures. Because they were too cheap to spring for the pro memberships. You have one picture of it on track. And it looks love. Where it's, it looks lovely. It's slightly on fire. Yes. <laughs> so maybe fire. it's a little charred. Uh, no, I think yeah. it's just the exhaust, but it's, uh, yeah. Well, how dumb is that? You're selling the car for this much money and you aren't going to. Uh, you couldn't fork sh- out the price of a meal for two at Chili's for a racing junk pro membership. Good luck selling that shit. <laughs> I mean, I mean, good luck selling that shit. Um, no, I'm, yes. <laughs> On the realm of cool things you can buy on there it's a two for a racing junk this weekend because chris sweeney is practically giving away his dodge dakota truck do you want to worm your way into the judges hearts show up with this amc engineered miracle for only five thousand dollars it's got everything you need to go racing got that america paint scheme got an alabama sized wang and how much much more but you know what it also doesn't have Pro membership. Come on, Chris. We would have we would have given you access to ours. But this is a great truck, actually, and that's a great team. And it's a I, I know they're kind of moving on to their uh, uh, Mustang on this one. But he does have a stack of stuff. It's uh, always an IOE contender. It gets lots of trophies. It gets lots of love. Just bear in mind, uh, for the longest time, it was running with a bed cover that was stolen from his neighbor's collapsed shed. That was one of my favorite things when he showed up at NOLA all those years ago. Hmm. <laughs> All right, it's upcoming races time. It totally back is. to High Plains Raceway. Lemons is back in Colorado for the High Plains Drifter. Seventy-eight cars, only eleven BMWs. Nice job, Colorado. Oh. Five Miatas, five Hondas, two Porsches, and so that's there's so many other good cars then, including a '68 Plymouth Roadrunner Satellite. A Chevy HHR from our friends at Apex Adjacent and you know, all the usual fun of the Colorado teams. They do a great job. The the Vegas nice going back. The uh, There's a Volvo wagon. It's going to be great. Uh, Salty Thunders bringing, the, uh, bringing their uh, Fiero. Mm. Mm, they have a great, great Saturday night potluck. 
They do there at too. HBR. It's really lovely. They're yeah. all nice yeah. people. So much fun. All right. Uh, Champ Car is in Texas Hill Country for the high Miata content Texas Grand Prix. There are 42 cars, six BMWs, 20 Miatas. Oh. I didn't realize that this, this was called, like I was doing the numbers and then I didn't realize this was called, uh, what, it's, yes, there's so many Miatas. One Honda, 20. zero Porsche zero Porsches, a Ford Pinto, a C230, an 81 Alpha Spider, and an Audi 90. That one champ car race, it's like all the Miatas in Texas go to it. It's craziness. Apparently. All right. No it's like, Porsche. It's like, a spec, it's like a spec racing is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. A little spec, bit. Spec Miata. You know, it's not a spec race. Lucky Dog. And Lucky Dog is the ridge for the Dog Fest, Oktoberfest celebration, and Beer Garden. Now, they have 69 cars. Nice. 18 of those are BMWs, 14 are Miatas. There are five Hondas, four Porsches, and a Hyundai Hyundai Tiburon. Well, but wait, because it's Lemons, and I'm sure Kim Harmon loves this. There's two <laughs> races. <laughs> Goodness. They're also at Pacific Raceway for the Smells Like AMC Spirit with a whopping 49 cars on this track day, four BMWs, pretty good, pretty good, mm -hmm. five Miatas, five Hondas, one Porsche, and the Austin Land Crab crawling its that, way to the racetrack. They're getting that thing sorted. It's getting there. Yeah. It's been several years, but yes. Right. Well, yes, as as it does. It's, it's it started as a land crab, so where you're gonna, like, <laughs> your, your base is it's, pretty low here. It's not where you are. It's how far you had to travel to get there. And starting with an yeah, Austin land crab, that is a voyage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yep. All right. It's recent results time. All right. Champ was at Mid-Ohio Grand Prix. Saturday, eight hour overall winner goes to the ATL Speedworks in their 1999 Porsche Boxster 718 by only 1.38 seconds with Porsche sweeping all the podium spots. EC win goes to uh, Section 8 Racing in their 05 Ford Mustang. Now, Sunday, the seven-hour overall was Team Saline Ketchup and their 99 boxer winning by 10 seconds over the ATL Speedworks team. And the EC winner was Team Bruce Innovations and their 2006 BMW M3. And I'm sure that that is a wonderful car. But I feel like having seen our Bruce weld brake pads onto a clutch, that's really Bruce Innovations. But good on them. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Stealing the copyright name. Sorry, Bruce. <laughs> and Lemons, as we'll talk about shortly, was at Road America for the Sausage Fest. Actually, it was the uh, spray the and Rust -oleum. slay. Rust-oleum. Yeah, the, the Rust-oleum spray and slay. But yep. uh, they, they to forgot the to tell everybody. Sponsor. Yeah, because even um, even the stickers from Lemons of Love said Sausage Fest because <laughs> they forgot to get it updated. It was a late, well, late ad. a little on the late side. Yeah. It was a late ad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we love Rustolium and we're so glad they sponsored it. Yes, thank you, Rustolium. Uh, there were 145 cars, and the winners of A Class were the Tatas and the 136 in their 1984 ish Chevy Camaro Cadillac from Lyle, Illinois. Love those guys. Car sounds amazing. Uh, the winner in B was forking around in the number 70 Dodge Stealth from Cedar Rapids. And the Class C winner, the Skunk Works 71 1972 Opal GT from Indiana. Well done, boys and girls. I've got some extra texture on all these. This is the Tata's 10th overall win, and this race tied it for the most Lemons appearances by a single car ever so that's mm. fine Highly the class b winner it's a it's a freaking dodge stealth mitsubishi 3000 gt this is a terrible car it won c class two months ago this is their first race in b and they were like sixth overall like wow. like unbelievable job in a mitsubishi huh. well, product welcome joe, to a yeah, joe <laughs> yeah, joe, right. joe are you listening <laughs> joe you can make one of these things last a whole race if you just back down a little bit and you can even win all right and Sorry. the C-Class car, 
only took the lead in the last like half hour because this was a total tortoise in the hair. The other one, the car otherwise leading was a Mazda two and it you know, down the road, America straights with 98 horsepower. They were just doing their thing. Had lots <laughs> of time. Doing, doing the taxes. Right. Yeah. They caught up on their Dang favorite show on yeah. Netflix. Yeah. Right. Dang yeah. yeah. And, uh, on Saturday, yeah. I believe the uh, Narwakis with the FOMOCO Dodge Magnum, they were in that hunt as well, but they had some linkage issues on that car. Yeah, they got closer. With those guys. But, but this Opal GT, this is not an Opal GT. No. It has a mid-mounted Audi 4.2 liter V8. And the front suspension is off of an S4. And this was basically just, I am bored over the winter in Indiana for the last five years. And it's never worked until this weekend. And then it actually worked. It is a, a horrifying creation, but it, it just kept working. Right. Who knew? Yeah, here's, yeah we have a picture right. of it. Yeah. It, you can see like, it, yeah, it don't, it doesn't look quite right. Yeah. It's Cause it's not, uh, anyway, organizer's choice was the dipsticks in their O3 Jetta. They, it's because they had a fantastic, uh, Camacho 2024 election theme. It's an idiocracy. He's got a three point plan. You know, they, they really leaned into it. They had their signs up everywhere. They never went anywhere without flags, uh, for, you know, Camacho, Hector, Camacho. Hector, Did they give you, uh, electrolytes. <laughs> oh yeah the car had you know, the the food pyramid full of brondo uh yeah everyone needed, every time we came in we said oh are you running low on electrolytes is that what the problem is right <laughs> uh, so they they leaned into it hard and that was great uh rustoleum we said we should do something for rustoleum right we gave a, a case of used paint that rustoleum had given used? us and we'd used to yep to a car with no theme uh, it was a Honda Fit. The team name is It's a Good Car. And these are a bunch of kids that just barely got this thing. It's a 300-something thousand-mile fit. And they didn't even get it through tech until Saturday afternoon. Because the problem was it would it ran by Friday until like late in the day before they couldn't, couldn't even get to the parade because their main wiring harness had a, a clip come loose and it fell down to the exhaust manifold and melted one wire, which was ECU power. So they were chasing oh. all kinds of stuff all day oh. Saturday until they found that. Like we felt bad for them. They were so excited once the car got running. And ran all day Sunday, so that was nice. But hopefully they can put a theme on it with the spray paint that they got. Yeah, that 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 <laughs> gosh, that hurts my soul. <laughs> that is a that they is a buttered so side hard. of bread down story right there. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, heroic fix was bike mark racing and, and mostly to Keith uh, Keith Kemp on that team. This is almost like a lifetime achievement award for him of all the crap he fixes. And, you know, his wristbands were black by the end of Sunday. <laughs> but, and, and a lot of that was working on other people's stuff. But for his car, even, we had a, a black flag all Saturday morning and then some yellow after that. He changed the transmission in his car during that time. Like, it was... Yeah, amazing. He what, by himself, an old trans out of his T40 with, SX with one right? hand. Yeah, and and then later he changed the diff too. So like there were two out of three wow. of the major powertrain components got changed, and like wow. it it was amazingly fast. Um, and he always helps everybody else out too. He's a really nice guy. So that was a, a and not just at the track. Like he's a he's a, a mechanic, and he's like always he's he's notorious for helping people in his neighborhood, and you know just like church and stuff like that. He's like the nicest. Yep. Uh, judge's choice went to failed contraception racing and their Firebird. They had a uh, essentially talk show "Who Is My Daddy" theme, and <gasps> uh, you know, yeah. Daddy on the Hood. It, it had Dale and Eric and Jay and Rustoleum, and of course, Eric was the daddy. And they kept bringing him uh, Father's Day gifts over the course of the weekend. <laughs> 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 well done. Yeah. Oh, right. Funny. And they, yeah, they've got a baby seat on the roof with a really frightening stuffed child on the top <laughs> the whole weekend. Um, but they leaned into that pretty well. Didn't they Let's also, were, were they, uh, they hosted the potluck as well? And No, that was Derek host of the oh, potluck. Oh, sorry. Never mind. All right. Me Mental, yeah. go back he one picture on that right there. So weren't they involved in that 
We'll talk about that. No. <laughs> no, they were not involved in that. That's a picture of a bit of a pile up that was at turn five. Um, yeah. I've seen the in-car video from that too. It's uh, not pretty, but the, the Firebird was not involved in that. Okay. All right. Uh, HMG was, we're just here for the SR. They had a Chevy Blazer with a um, Home Alone theme. They painted, the, and these guys change up their theme like every race and they're always good. Like, you know, they did in the past, they've, you know, the John Denver's tour bus theme and like all kinds of, they, they always paint their blazer up. They're nice guys too. This one, they did it like the, like the van of the thieves in home alone, the plumbing van from early on, the they had bandits. wanted posters up around the track. They served drinks out of like a plumbing tap at the potluck. They, they um, Eric's face on missing posters, calling him Kevin. So Eric was like, where's Kevin? It's Eric. Um, things like that. And this is also just a bit of a, uh, again, lifetime achievement. These guys always theme hard and have never won anything for it. And so this was great for them hmm. just to, to recognize all their, their past and current themes that they always lean into. So great job there. I got screwed, went to old dudes in their Ford Ranchero. This is a tragic story they had left from like south carolina or, or somewhere down there to come up to road america wisconsin their tow vehicle died about like a third of the way into the trip they couldn't get to any place to rent a truck they had to find they had to rent a car to, to drive somewhere else to rent a truck to go oh, back no. and get to their trailer Dad. oh no <laughs> And leave their truck at like the dealer to get fixed. And then they drove the rental truck with the trailer up to, up to the track at the track. Eventually the, the ranchero blew up too. So the guy, so they're driving back with a broken race car in a rental truck to go pick up, to you know, not pick up their broken truck. It's still at the dealer that they had to rent a car to get to. Like it's, it's, it's like a series of Aww. terrible things that happened. At these, and they're very nice people too. So that was a shame. They got, I mean, that's a gorgeous Ranchero. They've done like that Holloman and Moody theme down in South Carolina. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That thing's been running for years and they just, they just have a good time. Um, <laughs> they weren't this weekend, but it, no, no. Sure. Yeah. I'm so, uh, the I'm sorry, old pandering, dudes. Right. <laughs> The Shameless Panther to Sponsors Award. This is the regional trophy. This went to the Shitshank Redemption, the PT Cruiser. They were the very first ones to arrive at the parade. They had basically put a water heater in the back of their PT Cruiser, stuck up out of the roof that they'd made into a giant Rust-Oleum can. And they had cans of paint and let anybody just paint their car over the entire okay. parade night. Okay. So it got painted. Yep. Wow. <laughs> As you'd imagine. All right. Cans out of painting at the right. We'll do it. It, it, yeah. it looked good. You know, they commit to theme there. Well done. Yeah. Um, the Hella Sweet Trophy went to Idio Racy in their Toyota Avalon. This was a, a, a in contention for the IOE, but it, it didn't quite make it. But it was basically a bone stock 03 Avalon on all season tire the inside still had like the wood grain trim around the shifters and the the you know digital message center and the power window switches zip tied to the door like they left all of it in there it had a stock exhaust so you couldn't even hear it running ever <laughs> and it, it just kept going so like that's fantastic they stole the car from grandma and just went racing with it and that's how it looked uh rust -Oleum, Winner on index of affluency was Team Skid Steer. They brought a 1981 Mercury Cougar sedan. I'd never seen a Mercury Cougar sedan before, um, but that was it's not either of those mental at all. Oh, it was a <laughs> beige, beige Cougar sedan with a giant Cougar logo up on the grill. It had very clearly been in a bad hailstorm. <laughs> you could see it from any angle, but other than that, it was a completely stock Fox body Cougar sedan. Oh, Fox Bob, so the Mercury Bobcat. Sorry. Yeah. No, this is, this is, this is a Cougar and it had like a 200 cubic inch straight six and an automatic. This thing is awful. And it had the 136th fastest lap time and came in wow. like 50th or something stupid like that. It oh. just kept running 
very, very slowly. Another car that clearly never hit double digits ever, even down the straights at this track. And I remember because so, oh, it was no. so quiet going down the straightaway. And, and oh, crud, I thought we had a picture of it. Yeah, one of the uh, pictures from that event, uh, it, it does show it. Yeah. But, it was, just it, was time, but... to, it was exactly the kind of thing that, that Lemons wants to have. If we had a D class, this would have been in it. There it's, it is uh, in the center of this, right? Yeah, you can't see it. You can see that it's a beige sedan. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. well, because that's what it looks like. It's like someone in Minecraft made a sedan. Yeah. <laughs> but when, when your fast lap is almost the last fastest lap and you come in... <laughs> above mid pack almost top third yeah that's how you win an ioe in an 81 cougar so, yes, a lot of good well stuff there done. well done okay listen to our time well mental posted a picture of his scorched brakes on sunday and some guy named tim burr <laughs> said hmm potato chips for brake pads that's a bold move cotton to where DJ914 replied, it just may pay off. It didn't. Nope. <laughs> Spoiler alert. We, we may have finally talked those guys into getting some SD43s now that these ones mm. don't work. Nice. To which I cannot thank you enough. I've been lobbying for this since they did that breakup grade. I mean, those things are thin. <laughs> there was, yeah, there's some metal left and that's it. Not much. Uh, Jeremy Boonin said, uh, not, not, quote, not a lot of people have tried them, but I've been having great results with EBC SR21 pads up front. Ran most of Audubon and all over at America and still have a third or more of the pads left. No cooling ducts. I made sure to break harder than normal this weekend, too. So this is like my new go-to pad. Okay. That's, this is the centered pad. I've actually heard this from a couple of track day guys, not endurance racers, but they have they have just raved about that pad so it might be worth trying if you're uh, having a hard time getting uh your go-to pad um carl Apple applegate asked if there were actual race pads while tom bushwell said love that track need to get back there thomas endisfelder called the used pads race car brisket something Delicious. like that <laughs> I yeah, don't definitely think it burnt was down, delicious. That's for sure. <laughs> definitely don't eat them. John Samuel said it was not kind to us either and showed us pic of his cracked rotor. Oh, On the gram, I'm Dan. I'm, I'm screwing around, and I've, but I have that picture. There it is. That's, can't you can't yeah, see that, it at all. That's uh, a thumbnail. Tiny. Dan, <laughs> yeah. Dan said, stop using Oreos for brake pads. And on the Facebook, Adam N said, uh, it was great to see Chris and Mental at Road America. Yeah. The weekend was hard for them. They were They were working hard. From last week's episode on the YouTube, Cones in at said, quote, pro tip, golf cart rentals are $375 for the weekend. Mazda 2s on Turo are $275, which to their credit, is exactly what they rolled around Road America in. And apparently it was delivered and picked up at Road America for no extra charge. So follow what? Cones and at for more great advice. Although the uh, person that wrenched it to them was very excitedly uh, adamant about the fact that this is not good, that they can't take it on track, not allowed to take it on track. <laughs> and Randy's like, no, it's just a golf cart, really. Like, I just need to drive around the track. And it, like, you can't it. take it there so, anyway if you wanted to. Yeah. So they. Although I feel like maybe Randy took pictures of that race car, Mazda 2, and be like, oh, sorry, we'll fix it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tyler saw Tyler uh, several times this weekend, which was great to see him. And his car ran nicely all weekend. It's nice to see. He said, good track walk. I too never felt like I got turned 14 right. I'm not sure about double apex in the carousel, but I've never really tried it. In my MX3, I was able to pass quite a few people on the outside while they were hugging the inside of the track and cutting the inside made the apex on the way out. Uh, and if you can, it's definitely the way to go. It's one thing I thought was really wrong in your description of the entry to turn one is there, there's no way I'm getting to that braking zone at 120. It might be 100 on a good lap. On the gram, Chris, uh, cross threaded racing said we'll be there in both cars, different team names, but both cars for the first time. Hope you had fun. And on the threads, Jackie said, I've taken personal offense to the three broken Porsches. 
predicting the future. Sorry, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work uh, that much. No, it it did. It took the checker. Oh, it was fine. It did. It only yeah. broke. It only broke a little. The RV, the RV, and the trailer broke more than the race car That's did. Sadly, oh, like no. they just they just bent a little. It's fine. <laughs> no, it, I think it broke on the way home too. They had to like stop no, and do did. something else. Uh, he, he also ripped uh, the exhaust off when he was getting it out of the trailer. So, yeah, like yeah, triple so. wah wah. Mm. Oh, oh wait, wait, we bummer. had that. Sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> All right. Also, folks, we are sponsors of the Reckon Yard podcast. And I want to thank Jerry Wayne for his positive comments at, at like the, every show. He does a little cold read and he's like, I was just listening to that episode. Not tell you it's funny. It's blood. So he's actually saying a lot of great things. He is offering his fans takes his takes on our work. And he calls us one of his favorite driving podcast. So that's the one you listen to. Aww. You don't listen to it on the way to work. You listen to it like when you got a road trip, which Kind of follows a lot of the feedback that I think we've all gotten. People like to put it on when they've got a road trip on there. So if you're looking for something different, we're going to have a link to that. Jerry uses his various past vehicles as this common thread about life. And while he may call himself less than perfect, he is a master storyteller. And the Reckon Yard brings you along on a very relatable stories of Jerry's long and fascinating journey. And maybe about helping you become the kind of person you want to be. I find his show to be one of my favorite drop, brought driving podcasts if you really like a good, deep, southern, soothing voice. So thanks for those kind <laughs> words, Jerry. And hopefully we're going to see you in November. And we'll have a link to all that in our notes. You know okay. who else has a, a fascinating has a soothing, journey? And, oh, yes. And a soothing, the calm kind of voice. person you want to be. <laughs> the, yes, the kind of person you want to be. All of those things. Why, that's Chrissy's mom. That's very nice. I feel like she might have had some in-person listener feedback, and I don't remember who it was. Like I'll someone came up to her and went, "Are you Chrissy's mom?" and hounded her for cookies. No, or? it was something about the 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 show that we had. Oh, she had something to say about us. Oh, okay. Oh yes, yeah, the red interior and uh, and the, the gray interior. The gray. I think actually, Tim, I think she wanted to know what your favorite color was. My favorite color? Yeah. That's a very, my favorite color is red. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Oh, there you go, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hello, Chrissy's mom. Now you know. Oh, yeah, right? Wait, and also... Oh, uh, hold on. Ah, I've got that. Now you know. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have to give, this is not even a, like, I should have probably put this in what you're working on. I actually got to see some race friends this weekend. Uh, and, uh, yes, yeah, so I got together with Dishwashing Fairy and El Jefe. Uh, and we got together. Oh, you made but it also, out to the, the extreme event. No, we just oh, met them the for extreme dinner. dinner. That's a extreme dinner. Yep. And a beer, but that's about it. Uh, but anyway, my mom made them cookies. So, um, where I was on my way out the door and she was, I was like, Oh, you know what? I'm going to see race friends that really want cookies. She's like, let me just whiz, whip up, whip up some bis Biscoff bars and some chocolate chip cookie bars. And I was like, that sounds great. And then I gave them to them. So thanks mom. Anyway, it's me time of time. This last weekend, we went to Road America. Well, not we. Mental and I went to Road America, and we had a great time. So we're going to talk all about Road America. Yeah, Tim's Tim's sad, didn't go. Chrissy sad, didn't go. But and I, I, whatever. I, I, this is not uh, Schwein, you know, Freuden. Uh, yeah, you guys should be sad you didn't go. That was, God, the weather was great. The town's did, great. The people are great. The track's amazing. Did you just awesome. say Schwein, Freuden? Whatever, sh the, the the delight in other people's unhappiness. Was that Liechtenstein? Schadenfreude. There it is. Schadenfreude or Schwangfreuden. Right now, right now, Mushlong is redoing their T-shirts to be Schwangfreude. Schwangfreude. It's going to be awesome. Uh, it's the same thing. Schwangfreud. Right. <laughs> in this schwang freud episode um, <laughs> on it right now <laughs> right. <laughs> right, if you don't type that in i'm gonna have to uh, <laughs> already in it uh, yep <laughs> okay so let's just go through the weekend uh travel in i had a great travel in i flew direct flight from philadelphia to milwaukee and 
as I was checking in, American Airlines said, would you like to upgrade to first class for $75? I said, yes, yes, I would. Thank you. <laughs> Holy so crap. Yeah, I you did. Do. So that was great. So, uh, yeah, priority boarding, priority, you know, like, yeah, boarding group one. Okay, that's fine. Oh, mm -hmm. sir, can I get you a drink? Yes, yes, I would. I'll have a rum and Coke. Thank you. And they gave me extra rum and extra Coke right with it in a, in a glass, like a glass <gasps> on an airplane. You did not. You like, had a glass? Yeah, yeah they gave what? me a glass. It's first class. That's what glass. they do up there. Right. I had no I know, idea. They were so nice. We got better quality snacks, plastic. too. It was lovely. Right? Huh. Have you filled out your expense uh, report yet? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sent it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wait on that crap. Did Sorry, you? Uh, Kim wants it now. Did you, give, did you give all the? Did you give all the coaches the disapproving eye about? I you know looks as they walked by and disturbed uh, your. I tried to ignore them while sipping my beverage as I looked at my iPad. I figured that you know. Excellent. The normies there, right? Um, and, yeah, and my bag was the very first one off because they put a little orange tag on your bag thing. It's a priority bag off too. So that was great. So then I went and picked oh. up my rental car. So yeah, Mental nice. knows what I got for a rental car. So we're going to play guess the rental for the other people here. So oh, this, I, I, don't I, know. I reserve through, I reserve through national as I usually do. And it's Emerald Isle. So you go pick whatever you want in the aisle. I will preface this. So this was not my first choice. First, I, I got into a Volvo XC60 and was all ready to go and tried to set up you know, the CarPlay to plug in to, to go. And it only had a USB-C port and no <laughs> USB-A port and didn't have wireless CarPlay. So I had no way to hook up CarPlay. So I said, nope. And he had just I gotten out of out. first class and he was having right. none of this <laughs> plebeian nonsense. What? what cars don't have a U USB? Like a normal USB. It did. It had a USB-C port because it's a newer car. It only had C. And I didn't bring a USB-C to Lightning cord. Yeah, but I, mean, I only like, had my USB-A like one. What? There's, no. there's actually, he's right. There's a, there, it's a, it's a I mean, thing. Sure, I always carry but... the cigarette lighter adapter for my old school USB. And then, yeah. Yeah. But without CarPlay, oh. I'm not taking that. So that, so that was my first choice that I was not able to get. So how does it not even have wireless? That's just now that's the inexcusable. Well, I, part. I, I, I even Bluetooth to it, saying okay, it probably has wireless, and then it's like it, no plug in for CarPlay. This is stupid. I'm out. Went and got got something else. Hmm. So, question. Not cool, Volvo. You had a big bag. Were you I had planning one big on big bag and one little backpack? Were you taking anybody with you at all? No, but often once you're at the track, you would do end up taking other people with you. Oh, correct. I mean, I know that. I was just wondering if that was in your consideration. Mm. I was trying not to get the smallest thing available, but there really wasn't anything small to take. So I didn't really have a choice of that. What category car is it? Like, is, and let me preface this. Sedan. SUV, pickup truck. Minivan. It was an SUV. SUV, okay. How has it they we've had been a, playing a guess the rental that long and no one's ever asked that question? Because I feel like that would have made that game a I, lot I tried easier. To ask, <laughs> yeah, I try, I try not to ask that one because I want to do weirder yeah. questions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you like it? This is a great radio. Uh, no, not particularly. <laughs> Did you think you were going to like be, it? I didn't know. I it's some it's a, a vehicle that has a following. So you're telling me it's not a, a Mitsubishi. <laughs> you know better. I wouldn't pick a Mitsubishi or a Nissan or an Altima or a Taltima. Or an, That's a Rogue. A, yeah, um, a Nissan. Okay. Nope. What, Would you like a Nissan it, Altima it, or or if, whatever if it is? If it were a, if it were two thirds of the price that it is, I could see it being acceptable. But at the price they're charging, it's completely bullshit. I'm struggling What is the country here. of origin? U.S. of A. America. Traverse. No. <laughs> Solid guess though. Um, Overpriced and shitty. That's a traverse. I, I'm struggling. Tim, Tim, help me here. Um, is it a General Motors product? No. Why don't you just start picking cars? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Throw me a guess, Tim. 
All right, so Mer it's America. I'm going to go with a Dodge product and Oh man, it's not the big it's not the big. It's got to be the tiny Dodge, which is the what's the small what's the small Dodge called? The Hornet? No, no, the small SUV. The Hornet. The Hornet. Is it? That's an SUV? Yeah. yeah. It's really it's just a Alfa Romeo this Sonale with car. It. No, no, yeah. no. All right, so um, you're both wrong. I'm tired of this. Okay. <laughs> Ready? What is it? It yes. was a Jeep Wrangler Sahara plug-in hybrid. Oh. Wow. You went it was with a cool color blue. Hybrid? I would never guess that. No, me it, yeah, it was the plug-in oh. one, which is all they really sell in the Northeast and, Cal and basically on the coasts or mm -hmm. any place that they care about California emissions. They basically only sell the hybrids. And um, these, this was a Sahara, so it was the like street-oriented one, fully loaded. These are like sixty-five grand, and oh. I can't fathom a, how anyone would pay that for this thing. It's mm. a Nissan, made in America. It's a terrible. All Jeeps are terrible. All Jeeps are no, terrible. I am not a Jeep guy. <laughs> all Jeeps Wrangler are terrible. Has nothing to do, nothing to do with Nissan. All, all of them. They're all terrible. All Jeeps are yeah, it's not there's there's nothing Nissan in it, but there's a so many people love these things, and I don't get yeah. it. Like here's some of my complaints. Uh, I put the seat all the way back. I'm not a big dude. I'm like five eleven on a good day, and the seat was definitely not back far enough at all the way back. The um, wow, and you're not tall. That's weird. No, the steering was dead on center, like really dead. The rear Which shock a, tuning. I feel was like terrible. that's a Jeep thing, though. Like that's why they're terrible to drive on the freeway. Yeah, um, I expected the wind noise. Like, fine, it's square. All right, you know, it had a like the things that were good about it. it had a good big that uh, big ass screen for CarPlay, and the auto uh, cruise control worked okay. But there's no steering component to the auto cruise control at all. You still have to steer it. Um, stereo was all right. The hybrid was interesting, although I got it with less than one percent charge in the battery. And I put That's it in like battery it? charge mode. Right. I just I put it in battery that. charge it's a rental mode. Car. Thinking like right. Well I thought well it's, it's a hybrid. Okay, fine. I put it in battery charge mode thinking, okay, this will charge it up over time and I can use a it as bit? a hybrid around the track, right? It got up to one percent eventually. <gasps> at, at the track there was an E V charger. I tried to plug it in and the damn char you know, typical charging infrastructure in the US. The charger the card reader was totally broken. And so it wouldn't take any of my credit cards at all. I wouldn't even recognize them at all. So I'm not downloading the app for this just for fun. So I forget that. Seriously. So I got like twenty I got like twenty miles per gallon in my mostly highway, you know, some just puts it around Elkhart Lake time with it. Uh, yeah. I, I just cannot understand how people pay that much for this thing. If it were forty grand, I'd say, okay, like I get it. Okay. But not for sixty-five. No way. Hmm. Anyway, um, all right. So Thursday got to the track and they didn't need any help. They were holding everybody. They wouldn't let anybody in until seven. So they had everybody in a lot on the side, and nobody was there. So I went to town where you know checked into the hotel, and the um, judging staff went to Seepkins, and no one was there. It was totally dead. So we drank beers and ate cheese curds and sandwiches and whatnot at Seepkins. Had a nice time. And heard about the seven o'clock checkered flag getting waved on the RV parking lot and the disaster that ensued as a result of getting everybody in. And we just drank our beers and laughed at that and all the other silliness we were doing. So anyway, <laughs> Mental, how was your travel day? Uh, so I took a red eye. I got out of here about seven o'clock, landed there uh, just past midnight. And so the cones and that comment about the Turo, you know, I chuckled and then I got online and I started looking, I'm like, holy, holy crap, you, you can get a car really, really cheap around there. And then it got me thinking, well, wait a minute, what kind of deals are going on? So I also had a rental available for me. Unlike Chris, um, it was not something that I would pay for. And I got it for a utilitarian purpose and I really, really liked it. Uh, it is foreign. And I also had two big bags. If anybody wants to take a quick guess before we go halfway SUV? down this rabbit hole. I'm sorry? SUV? Not an SUV. Sedan. Not a sedan. Because if I say what it is, well, you're screwed. It was a truck. 
Remember, I said utilitarian purpose. So. Foreign truck. Uh, yep. Toyota Tacoma. It was. Toyota Tacoma. I got there. Uh, it's 1230, and the girl's like, I have three pickup trucks. I've got a Dodge, an older Dodge, or this Toyota. And Pantless Matt had landed, and he had gotten the SR5, and I got the TRD. And it was because Matt said, man, this truck is actually really great. And so I got the uh, TRD, and it's fantastic. Uh, its robot mode was really, really good. Uh, it had the USB-C, but because I used my little old-school charger, it also did over-the-air car play. Uh, the turbocharger, I got like 28 miles per gallon driving it all the way up from Wisconsin. It'll hold everything. The back seat was comfortable. Legitimately happy with that uh, that choice. That was a fun car. Crazy. I wouldn't pay the $80,000 that those right. things cost, but yeah. I miss what you said, Chris. Yeah. That's the new new redesign of the Tacoma, not the old one. Yes, so this I've is like 2024. Is quite good. Yeah. Yes, it it is obnoxiously good. So fantastic! Yay. You win the rental car game. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Wee, you win. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, it's it's um, even when I got it, the uh, the rental car person said, "Are you just getting a truck because you need a truck? Because I've got other stuff." If you just got it because it was cheap. And then I noticed they had a C8 Corvette, which they wouldn't give me. But, uh, yeah. So if you're looking to rent, man, trucks are cheap. Because I got another one coming up at NCM here in two weeks. And I got it for a song. So hmm. check out Enterprise. Get yourself a truck. Especially if you're going to a lemons race. All right. Cool. And you, uh, you did you slept in your truck at the track that night, right? I, I did. I, uh, I rolled up. By the time I got there, it was a little, it was like, 2 30 almost three got a bit of a cat nap woke up at 5 a.m decided i was done with this drove into a lo lovely little place called the red shorts cafe in plymouth wisconsin about seven miles down the road had an amazing homemade corned beef hash and eggs and something called an elvis latte which was fantastic it's a latte with peanut butter syrup banana syrup and chocolate syrup wow all of those things sound amazing to me. Hash, <laughs> wow. and hash, and then an Elvis. You, 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 oh, and it was uh, all the wow. right buttons right now, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and it, what wonderful, you know, of course it's, it's Wisconsin. I don't, I think they make everyone who's a jerk in Wisconsin move to Iowa, but everyone was really, really nice. And I'm in the cafe. And of course they're wearing shorts cause it was 50 degrees and t-shirts. And I'm in the cafe for about five minutes where I had to go back out to the truck and get a sweatshirt. Cause I was freezing. And they looked at me rather funny when I came back in and I just said, it was 105 when I left where I live. So yes. it's too cold <laughs> in the rest of the world. <laughs> I, yep. I did come prepared. I had a scarf. I had a hat. I had a warm coat for the parade, sure. all yeah. that kind of stuff. You've been talking about it for a while now, about how cold it's going to be. My blood has gotten so thin. I'm so used yeah, to these days. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right. Uh, Friday, <clears throat> got up at a reasonable time because I had to get to the track because we had a 9 a.m. staff meeting because we were all going to be busy at the parade later that night. So staff meeting, and then there wasn't a whole lot for us judges to do for a while, so Hung out with uh, various people around the track. Um, Dean, Jackie, and Matt were kind enough to let me take the 944 out for about 20 minutes in practice day just to remember the track and give it a shot, which was nice. I uh, really appreciated that. It was fun to drive the track again. Remember it more than the three laps that I had in 2016. So that was good. Porsche was driving pretty well at that point. Everything felt good. And so then uh, we went down to town at about four o'clock our hotel was right right there in the in the center of town so just walked across the grass to get to uh, the parade area got our judging robes got our wagons for stuff got ready the town shut down and it's not much of a town to shut down but they shut it down and uh got ready to judge and <clears throat> so the way this works is the Metal's playing a video of all the cars lined up ready to leave. So the way this works is that there's a U-shaped road in town around Seepkins by the lake. And Seepkins is the old hotel and bar and whatnot that has been the kind of the center of the race there for years and years and years. And the, the race course around the public streets used to go right by it there. Um, and this is where they used to park as like grid basically too. Um, so we had everyone park there and... Uh, we split up our judging crew. Shelly and I took one side, and Eric and Chris Champion took the other side. 
and we knew that we had to make progress because last year apparently it went really late on the judging like the people were trying to leave and they weren't quite done yet and it was raining it was terrible so this year we're like no we're going we're going we're going so we had we had spent a good amount of time ahead of time essentially pre-classing everything knowing about what we wanted to make it quicker and we just went down the row and um there was plenty of people who had you know decent themes a few people who just didn't care uh and a couple people who you could tell i don't think you quite get this <laughs> and, and, really <laughs> oh yeah yeah like uh, like I think we're going to have problems tomorrow, I think. And hey, I'm not here like, to make friends. Um, I'm here to win. Well, like they kind of tried. Some of them kind of tried and some of them definitely didn't. And they weren't high. Like, it's just like, are you just don't get the spirit of this. I mm. don't think And some of them, even though they had no theme, were very like nice and earnest about it. Like, I just got the card together. I'm sorry. I have a theme. Sure, that, um, that happened. Yeah. And you get the people. Perfectly really, acceptable excuse once. Yes. You know. Yeah. And then you get the people that are really butthurt about classing sometimes. And it's what you weren't going to win either of them. It doesn't matter what class you're in. So it's fine. <laughs> right. Um, but overall, very nice people. Uh, huge. I mean, the, the street was packed, like packed full. Like we had to push people out of the way. There were definitely people there that didn't know, really know what lemons was. They were just there like, what are you doing? What's what are you doing? You know, I'm like, I'm judging. What's that? It's part of the race. Excuse me. Got to go. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Running out of time here, people. Yep. Uh, we had a lot of beer for bribes, as you'd expect in Wisconsin. Lots of beer. Um, oh, my gosh. Various so assorted sausages and things, too. And one team even had their own homemade sausage, which was delicious. Right? What? So good. Um, yeah. Jimmy Jimmy Norenchi gave us some uh, Lego Daytona prototypes, four different brands for you know for each of us as a judge. It's a different brand of Lego, so that was great. Um, yeah, a lot of good stuff. And I guess we were eating cheese and drinking beers as we're walking through town of stuff we got and a lot of other silliness. So overall, good night. Uh, Shelly and I won the race of the judges because we, we finished lot. our row first and then we started up the other side a little bit just to rub it in a little bit to eric and chris that we did that also i'm sure it just helped them get done so that's not so bad yeah totally it, we, well we got it done in plenty of time which was great mm -hmm. Good. um and then we uh we were all pretty tired just uh most people just kind of turned it in and relaxed a little bit we i sat up with them with jeff stobbs and shelly and her husband justin in the big kind of game room ish of the hotel just relaxing for a bit having a couple of beers and went to bed so, being up on your feet judging for those hours is uh it takes a little bit out of you sometimes so it's it's a lot it's a it, lot yeah yeah i i have bought shoes just to like you know because it hurts i just buy like these cheap chinese really squishy foam shoes that i know are going to fall apart but it's just gives you something a little bit easier to walk on by Hoka's, it's a it's a running brand. H O K A. They are amazing. All right, he is amazing. Writing you're gonna down. be on your feet all. You're gonna be on your feet all day. They're They look like clown shoes, but you can just laugh your way. <laughs> Why go with on? Dead. They're amazing. So all right, mental. Yeah, what? My how was your Friday? Good. So Friday, same thing. Drove down there. That's I, that's always just so much fun. Like the CMP event, and the town was out. Like once we got into town, people are coming out of bars or videotaping, and I got to drive uh, Jerry's three hundred two powered uh, V eight swapped uh, BMW. Now, sure, the car's cheaty as crap, but it also sounds really nice, and everyone loved hearing that one. So you know, got a couple throttle blips and kids are cheering so that was a ton of fun while we're standing there long after the judging had gone by we managed to sneak into seepkins and get some cheese curds and chill out for a bit they also had a great root beer in there uh a, a friend of mine when i first started with extreme experience shows up and goes what mental what are you doing here reed what are you doing here one of the employees of extreme experience was getting married he is david hobbs's son and the entire Hobbs family, uh, the racing Hobbs family was there because that's like their home base. And they were having all the engagement parties. And I ended up running into a bunch of folks from Extreme Experience right here is Josh Jenny, who we've had on the show like eons ago. And he's 
still working with them and makes carbon fiber parts for racing BMWs and stuff like that. So it was actually just a fantastic time. And we had a bunch of folks that didn't know what lemons was and you get to talk about all of it. That was just a blast and to walk around and catch up with everybody. And yes, the, that, that may be my favorite parade ever, uh, in lemons. What, what a great time. It was good. I felt and like, uh, only- I felt like the B classing versus a classing was a little heavy handed, but that's just my opinion. It worked out perfectly. And that at the end of Saturday, the top 13 were all A. Yeah, and right. I was watching. A nice group of B. And then by the end of Sunday, a couple of the faster B class cars had moved up to sixth and seventh. So I think that's. Because I think the, the fast perfect. A stuff was, you know, Road America is hard because you are at high RPMs a lot. And a lot of those fast cars were just popping. Yeah. Every single class was a tight battle at the end. So that makes me feel like, and there was a notable gap between A and B. Right. Notable right. gap between no... B and C. So I think we got it. I think we got it right. Third place B car or B's not winning, right? Yeah. Right. But yeah. there was also I like mean, an A class car that should have been in B that was a hundredth place. But you know, like I said, yeah. Uh-huh. Tim. So the the team that won the Shameless Pandering to Sponsors Award, the Shitshank Redemption car, which, which was the graffiti car, mm-hmm. did anyone go and look at their parking spot the next day to see how much <laughs> overspray was all over the street i did not that would have been good no, but I wish that was all had. i could think about was like oh. i felt bad for their neighbors and i felt bad for the guy that had come back in and like repaint the and a whole lot of people's room. fingers so you got all these <laughs> so, kids that are like yeah so let me spray it that's now, yeah like the parents like what happened to your hands you were just gonna go right? look at a car it was awesome. everybody <laughs> has colors well, over saturday spray night, everywhere yeah saturday night the whole town was packed because there were at least two weddings going on between Seepkins and the place we stayed across the street. There was the Ferrari club was in town cause they were taking over the track on Monday. So there were just Ferraris and stuff everywhere. Um, like it was really hard to find a parking spot Saturday night. I had to drive the Wranglers front wheels over some of the mobile parking barriers that they had erected and that were put on the curb just to kind of squeak into a spot. <laughs> it was like, it, yeah. Uh. Uh, that was the old time I used the off-road ability of the Wrangler was to go a couple <laughs> inches over this parking barrier thing to get to in illegally. So, uh, yes, illegally. Uh, it was legal once I got there, um, and yeah, but there was no you couldn't see where that PT Cruiser had been before at all. It was mm-hmm. it was busy. So, uh, if you guys, um, yeah, I think sorry for party racing has an excellent drone footage of the parade while it was still daylight on their uh, Facebooks. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So Friday uh, was good. Saturday. Anything Saturday. else for Friday for you, Metal? Nope, nope, nope. That was great. Uh, and just for everyone that's thinking, man, I really want to go to that race. Yeah, you you really really do. This is this is yeah. this is why Jimmy near Wrenchy towed. He towed four days to get out there. Is towing four days to get home. Same thing with Jackie and Dean. Yeah, you want to go yeah, to this one? It was great. The, uh, my favorite part about the parade, though, is that it's so close to the track. It is five minutes or less. From the track, it's not like CMP where you drive, got to drive half an hour to Kershaw. You got basically you have to tow your car, or it has to be street legal. No, this is anything could go. Just l- like literally strap flashlights to the front of the car to have headlights, which we did adequate. for the Miata. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Totally. But that's it. So I think it's, it's escort is great. It's easier it's, for the teams to get there and back than as CMP. It CMP is a commitment. So it's one core's light from the track. Yep. <laughs> Instead of a cooler. Totally. Ah, yep. Excellent. Excellent. As a passenger. Yep. Yes. Uh, Saturday, we got off this, you know, we had our driver's meeting. It was a big, big crowd, as you can imagine, because 145 cars is a big crowd. Got everybody gridded, um, went through the false grid to get, you know, it was the only time to get everyone dick checked and on the way. I only caught one car with cheater tires going to start the race, and it was a car that I expected to potentially have cheater tires on it. And they were the ones with the blueprint racing engine that they didn't even try to hide. It still had the blueprint dipstick in it. It's like, dude, come on. Really? And and why are you going to go cheater tires on a four mile on a course that long? Whoa. Okay. I think they were they were real racy. One of the guys had a bit of an attitude problem initially too. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, they lasted about sixteen laps and left, but they, ah! they after, after they ah! did, after they changed their tires. Yep, they broke something and left, and that was fine. I'm not sure this is for them. Um, karma. Yeah, pretty Woo! much. There, there was another car, Karma, that we'll talk about. We can talk about a little bit later. Um, so anyway, everyone got out and track and was going, and we were busy right away. Like, uh, we had a, an over under of how long it would take, and it was nine twelve. Chris Champion won the over under with nine twelve. Uh, that's when we got our first car in, and it didn't stop for a while. And then eventually, there was a bit of a pile up in turn five, which is the second long straight after you go into the Sargento Bridge. Some cars had slowed down. There was not a flag right in front of it. The flag was way back at turn three, which by the time you're all the way at turn five feels like an eternity. Um, a couple of cars were basically stopped on the track. Another one in front of the, the car that ended up, there were two cars that ended up in the incident. It was a Focus and a Cutlass. And because of the, the line of sight from the Focus, they couldn't really see what was going on until it was too late. And they spiked their brakes and spun out into the side of the Focus, hit the back of the Cutlass. And the Cutlass never made it back out. It got creamed in the back. The Focus like bent lots of things and, and managed to get it back out after... Uh, persuasions and hydraulics and trucks and an entire new rear suspension and a lot of stuff so it was that caused a black flag all and that lasted for a good half hour and after that they got everyone out circulating under yellow and that yellow lasted a good long time to calm everybody down the f and down. it worked it worked it's good we only had like two cars get to a third penalty all day which was incredibly disappointing for us because we had so many good penalties planned for these people and we'd get them they'd get it to two and we'd tell them all right we're gonna do something fun next time get ready and they didn't except there was this one car that they put out they you know very successfully did the well we're new to this i don't, don't know and they were a new car and it was a mustang and uh and shelly had put him in b because she thought you know i don't think they're gonna push too hard they okay and then they go out and they are circle track drivers and they are just super aggro and causing problems and everyone's like man that mustang oh those guys are terrible so that's to their, they come in for a penalty and they speed in the pits on the way there. So we call that, all right, this is like three and a half for you guys. <laughs> and so we say, all right, we're going to put you on the roof. It's Saran Rapid to the roof because they were the first one that got to this point. This is great. Well, you have to drive. You can drive around very slowly in first gear and tell people that they should you know, not speed in the pits. And they talk for a little while and talk for a little while and say, yeah, I think we're just going to go home. <laughs> so that was the <laughs> other self-selecting penalty of the right? weekend is the wow. two nice racy circle track folks decided uh, and their excuse was we don't want to damage the roof <laughs> from from getting from having somebody from on top having of it? the guy on it yeah we don't want to damage the roof wow uh, it's not like you're hitting it with a bat yeah. Well, why don't we just strap you to the bottom of the car and then you can drive around? How's right. that sound? We, I, nope. Tim, I want to say you and I have done this to, to teams and they went, okay, um, the roof won't handle our weight. Can we sit in the trunk? Like we had, we had, we had, I remember saran wrapping someone to a trunk. You know, like they sat on the trunk and they saran wrapped it and they went through and apologized. Like, you know, like the, I've seen that use an excuse, but not as an excuse to I'm going to blow our entire entry fee and just go home because – this crew is not acting me, letting me act like a tool. <laughs> yeah, they amazing. were complaining that everyone else was being difficult to them. And that's because they were being such jerks on track that everyone was being very defensive around them because you didn't know what they're going to do and then how aggressive they were. So anyway, that that's the other one that uh, self-solving problem, which we do that coming to Saturday morning. It's like, yeah, that car probably shouldn't be in B, but that's a, that problem's going to solve itself. And it did. <laughs> yep. It sure wow. did. Yep. But well done, that, Shelley. It, Eric, right. Eric, don't it, hire no fool judges. Right. After that, every, everything calmed down. And like we didn't get to do any fun penalties. It was quiet 
on Saturday. So I like I went walking around looking for people that are broken. That's how I found those kids with a fit and saw all their problems with the wiring harness and the the uh, uh, AMC ambassador with the that's a drag week car. They cracked their power glide entirely around the case. Ended up having to swap in a TH350 of unknown provenance. They like put an entirely different transmission in the car, not just a different one, <laughs> an entirely different transmission because that's all they could Fine. get. Like Fine. right things like that. Um, they took yeah, the Jack or the Kenosha Kenosha Kickers. Yeah, they did. There was a Civic, the Johnny Lightning Civic. They they cracked their transmission and it smelled terrible. They had stripped all of the teeth off of fourth gear. They eventually showed me a picture the next day. Fourth gear, no teeth at all. Um, there was a whole bunch of carnage like that going on around the pack. But I had time to walk around and see that kind of stuff because the penalty box was quiet. Was yeah. was the Oldsmobile that was in the the first wreck? Were they the Gilligan's Island folks? They were. I saw I saw yeah. pictures of them, and I heard lots of good stories about those folks. Yeah, eventually on Sunday they uh, they said, "Oh, we need, uh, you know, we're, we're, can you guys uh, tech our car? I think we can go back out." They all came up over completely in theme, had the bumper tied up, and did a whole shtick in Gilligan's Island where like Gilligan you know, like grabs the rope and the bumper <laughs> falls off, and the skipper <laughs> yells at him, and all that crap. And they did it just for our benefit and just to have fun. They weren't going back on track. They just thought it would be fun stick Get with out. Their bit to do. That's so those funny. folks were great. They had a, I mean, that's it's a crappy weekend when your car gets crashed and you can't make it back. But they had a great attitude at the end. Uh, so kudos to them on that. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, then Saturday night it was uh, the potluck was going on and all the staff left. I was the last one there. I got some pictures of the potluck going on and then I went to dinner with the rest of the judging crew back in town and. We retired to the pool at the hotel, which is heated indoor, nice pool, and went to bed. Pretty simple. Mental, how was your Saturday? Painful. We um... <laughs> the opposite of what you just talked about. Yeah, yep. uh, <laughs> we we had the three hundred two swapped uh, BMW, which I'd I'd been assigned to, and uh, Jerry took it out early. The clutch was not completely disengaging, and you could smell the clutch. It was burning, so we had to bring it in, get it up, uh, adjust the clutch on it, and we finally got it to where it would engage and go all the way around the track. Uh, it's a quick car. We then put my friend Josh, who came up from Team Fat Crack. He was running the car, and it was not behaving well, and it started throwing belts. So we were fighting uh, the belts on that. It was shredding its, uh, the one accessory belt on the 302 that powers everything. So it did all of that and that on that car would occupy the remainder of our day. Uh, luckily, um, on Friday I had gotten out in the Porsche and then also Jimmy let me go out in their 144 table for one E30, which my, I mean, I knew that car was fast. I just did not know how balanced and, and damn near perfect it was. So we fought that one. Finally, Saturday night, while everyone else was at the potluck, we are trying to figure out, we're trying to replace and shim alternators because we, 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 we know something's off. We don't know why. And Nick from the Toyota Matrix crew, the folks that were walking around all weekend in their pajamas, walks over, looks at it, and says, the power steering pulley, that bolt's supposed to be flush, which was letting the power steering pulley wobble which would eat our belts and then throw them so we had to put a specialty tool in there put in the bolt no more problems put a pin in that because we're going to revisit that on sunday saturday oh. night yeah, saturday night got back to the hotel but while i was there a listener to the show who i have not seen for 30 years a very good friend i was in the air force with in the 90s in nebraska jim bagley lives in wisconsin Drove up a couple hours from Madison, got there uh, not too, uh, yeah, like uh, 10 or 11 on Saturday morning, hung out with the whole team and crashed with us. And uh, it was great to see Jim and uh, just uh, to, you know, do, doing the uh, bad podcasting thing. I'm going to try and dig out the uh, picture and show it on my, uh, all right, stop doing that, uh, show it on the screen. But, you know, there's uh, my good buddy, Jim, you can see. Uh, and even though he's got a full head of gray hair, I'm, I'm older than he is, but that's okay. Uh, so that turned out to be great. Just be, being able to catch up with him, Josh Jenny and his new wife stopped by. So we had a good, we had a good Saturday as far as hanging out with the team and everything. And everybody was being great. The Miata ran really, really well, but yes, it was, uh, 
you know, carnage. And as you saw from the brake pa- uh, pads, it also, the Miata destroyed its brakes also on Saturday. So we had to put new pads on there. And those were the new pads on that one. Got back to the hotel. We had all kinds of ambition about staying up all night and realized we were all exhausted and just passed out. And mm-hmm. our um, Josh, uh, who, again, from Team Fat Crack, walking to the plane, to fly up there, check to see if there was a last minute cancellation at Seepkins with all the weddings and the Ferrari stuff. And it turns out there was, and we rented a two bedroom condo for less than it would have cost for a hotel. And this condo was bigger than my first house. And it was lovely. So we were right there by the bar and the restaurant. Great time. That's amazing. Good. Yes. Like really yeah. well done. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, just Mental's to, lack of planning paid off in the car and <laughs> occasionally put, surprising. Put that in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yes. <laughs> so Sunday morning, uh, I'm going to steal a little bit of Chris's thunder. Now go through your Sunday. I don't. Have Eric to wasn't mad. He was disappointed. And we all knew before we left the track on Saturday that we had to be there early because of the first ever Sunday morning driver's meeting at a Midwest race. Mm. Not great. Yep. Not great. Well, after Not great the either. shenanigans Saturday morning, we wanted to make sure that wasn't going to happen again. And so, yeah, Eric did his, uh, did his best dad voice to everybody and said, Calm, calm down everybody like this is not mm. how the midwest does things we're mm. going to be harsh on penalties today coming in so you best be on your best behavior and they were everyone that i heard out there said oh yeah it's much calmer than yesterday out there everyone was like no you go first no you go first <laughs> and very <laughs> polite we only had one team get to their third penalty in the whole day and that was it and there were some uh, there was some kids with a Lincoln LS and the guy came in for, uh, for spinning off. Cause he put it in, he couldn't find third gear and spun off. And then he was speeding in the pits. We got him on the radar gun at 15. So okay. I said, you need to work on your precision and your attention to detail. So I gave him a 3d wooden puzzle that Chrissy had given to me for Christmas and I couldn't get back together. So I brought that <laughs> and this whole team, like eight of these 20 something engineers all descend on this puzzle half hour later they're still going and it's not done and i feel bad so i say all right so you guys it's been half an hour and they're like what and, and this, you guys get somebody can go back out in the car but other people have to stay and finish the puzzle because you need that sense of satisfaction of completing it because you can't just leave it alone now you, you you'll feel hollow inside and <laughs> so they have bonehead to can put this puzzle together why are you not finished right. Yeah, it took them another like 20 minutes. And then I was like, all right, keep the puzzle. You earned it. <laughs> so they, they the puzzle. Right. But that was the only third penalty we had on Sunday. And we were so disappointed. Although we did have a lot of black flag virgins coming in. So uh, Shelly would take a selfie with them and like, and whatever, whoever, whoever else of us was around for all our black flag virgins. Just uh, that they, they had made it there for the first time. And... Um, yeah, it was really quiet. I went over to Canada Corner with Jeff Stobbs for a while just to watch from there because it was quiet. And that was a great uh, viewpoint. You can get really close to the track at Canada Corner in the spectator view- viewing area. <clears throat> and so that was neat to see. Um, ah, we figured out awards. Classes changed up at the, you know within the last hour. Had award ceremony drove back to milwaukee in my not so good jeep and then we went out to dinner and that was it but it was a it was an easy nice day everyone calmed down so thank you everyone for calming your driving down although i'm very disappointed we had some really nice penalties that we did not get to use but there will be time in the future for them no no doubt we'll get back to those put those in your pocket for later (laughs) oh yeah penalties don't expire Oh, actually, right. no. We had one other three car, three pe- three penalty team on Saturday. We made them do a commercial for lemons, and they nailed it on the first take with oh, Jeff Stobbs on the video. They it was the uh, Rod throwing fools. They had a great attitude about it. They were they were they did a fantastic job. So I'm sure you'll see oh, that in the rest of the video. I can't wait. Yep. Rod throwing fools are usually pretty good too. Like they're yeah. So 
They get it. They totally get it. They totally get it. Metal, how was your Sunday? Terrible. So, uh, and I'll <laughs> see if I can uh, make this work. So, uh, being robbed of actually getting onto the track on, uh, see if I can make this, yeah, quick time player. Uh, there it is. There's the 302 powered. Um, as I enter onto the track, uh, actually, that's not even me. That was from Saturday. But so I was going to do the lead off on this one. And immediately I got, um, as I got out there, the temperature immediately spikes, goes right to 250 and then exceeds the mechanical of the gauge. So I shut it down get towed in because I'm not going to be the guy that oils down the track and we go through and it had, it had overheated, but they couldn't figure out what. So they went through, they refilled the water, sent it back out. I got one lap in anger and it did it again, brought it back in. And our, our pre-diagnosis is we cooked the head gasket the day prior when the belt kept throwing off of it and it was dumping exhaust into the combustion chamber, which would have the water completely spike and then calm down by the time I got it in, but doing a head gasket is a lot easier than doing a rebuild, especially if you ventilate the block. So we parked the car, wandered down to sorry for party. Dean, literally I'm strapping him into this car and he tweaks his back and he's like, Oh, get me out. Mental. Take the car, take the car. Just take it out. Just don't wreck it. So I, I did, I got to go out and uh, do an hour in the uh, 944, which is as much as we'll pick on that crew about it. Um, the problem is, is Dean and Matt are way too smart. And they don't listen to Jackie enough because if they'd have done what Jackie told them, the car would have been fine. But it's a, it's a great car. And it was surprisingly capable on that course. And I never got Matt's guts to throw it into turn one with the reckless abandon he did. But it's very well balanced. You just, and then they redid take, the schedule. That car takes a little while to get used to. It like does. It's, it, 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 but once you have become one with the car, which takes after that said time then you can trust it to throw it in the right spots and how it likes to be balanced to the corner and that's it's then it's very good and mm -hmm. obviously the prep level is impeccable um except for like it's, it's, always it's like not a car you can thing. just yeah yeah except you can't Matt just hop in that car real. and go fast no i think you Matt have to... did a 304 in that car that weekend which is yeah. fast he definitely for, got close to three a yeah. car like one like a 155 horsepower car and a four mile track that's um, fast and like to, to what chris is saying when you when you know it and you trust it you just don't lift and you don't have to um so you know but you've got to be able to get on the gas and hang on to it yeah he did a 3044 as the best lap on that car toward the end very end of the day on sunday wow yeah mm -hmm. and then uh then i got in the miata and it was one of those uh kind of I, I know this. I know the uh, skinny coyote Miata. I'm, I've, I've, I've been with it through several iterations, and I finally settled in and got comfortable. And even with just you know 119 horsepower or whatever that car has, I managed to get the Miata into a 309, and had a great day. And handed it off to the next guy, who then proceeded to realize that we, even though we told him that morning he would have no brakes, he had no brakes. And then he went and talked to Chris and Chrissy or Chris and uh, Shelly. And yeah, then we did a brake job and put him back out on the track. <laughs> what kind of pads were they running mental? It's the, cause it's a wildwood upgrade on the front. They've got the wildwood, you know, track brake pads. Uh, but after lobbying to this, finally, uh, one of the other uh, guys on the team went and talked to Chris and got his contact over at Porterfield. And I am confident that at NCM, we will have a proper set of SD 43s or, are you sure you know, they something. were, if they're quiet stops <laughs> organic <laughs> not, power stops. Yeah, not exactly. And I, yeah, when I was one, out there, cause I always get that car with no brakes. I'm always in the car at the end of the day. So I'm used to not using them at all. And I was using the transmission and uh, it was a lot more third gear than I would have used any other time. But, you know, coming into uh, the left to enter into the carousel and, uh, and also the kink and then even coming out of that, I would go four, three, and then use that, throw it in there four back up to five. But it, it just, uh, you know, it, while it was a challenging weekend, I got to see old friends. I got to drive. I kind of felt like myself again. Uh, so, yeah, all in all, a great weekend. 
And then I also cool. drove back to Milwaukee and um, had very ambitious plans about trying a new restaurant there. And I got to the hotel room that Dean basically gave me because they were going to drive back that night. So thank you, Dean, for the uh, free hotel room. And as soon as I got down, sat down, washed my face, took uh, got some of the stank off, realized I was friggin' exhausted. So I just went down to the hotel bar, got a burger, and passed out about 8.30. Yep. For my 3 a.m., for, for my 5 a.m. flight, which put me here, and then I jumped in my car and went straight to work. Yeah, I had a 6.15 a.m. flight. Got into Philly, got got home, and after about an hour, started working. Had my half day. <laughs> anyway, it was a great weekend. Uh, the weather was perfect racing weather. It was in the low 60s during the day and sunny and a little chilly at night, but that was okay. Sun was out. There was some wind, but it wasn't tragic. Uh, lots of nice people. I like the attitude of the people around the Midwest a lot more than Texas races, um, at least Houston. And... Uh, Great track. Good people. Nice to see everybody. Thanks for the bribes and the hospitality, everyone. <laughs> would, would everyone agree that this is this is a must do race on the level yes. schedule? Absolutely. Yeah. The track is amazing. It really is. The yeah. people are the amazing. Facility. The the town's amazing. The like the yeah. the, the, the track itself is enough to it's go, beautiful. but you add in all the extra stuff. And, and I like that they did it a little earlier in the year this year because it was just enough warmer. Like it's almost like perfect time in Wisconsin there. Um, we'll see if they can get that date again, how that goes. But uh, it's great. But you know, the offside of that is that it was pretty busy in town at nights because other things are happening. Where when they do it in mid-October, there's nothing going on. So, Well, it also poured, so nothing was going on yeah, anyway. That, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't, that, that doesn't help. It makes it easier. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right okay thanks for anything else about your, your event i'm so nope. jealous i i really wanted to be at that race i really did <laughs> such a you were next year timmy and you uh, were missed too chrissy every year There's every year, I'm going. Next year i don't care damn yes, the torpedoes everyone asked going. for chrissy Everyone wants to know where she was because she's better than me. And everyone says hello, like everyone I could possibly imagine. But like a typical race, oh, you know, we're there and they see everyone from everywhere. It's like, oh, there's Mary and Anton and Neil and, you know, like you. Well, you're kind of in start. the middle of the of the world to see. Right. And there's just, coast, just everybody from all over the place. Right. Yep. There's yeah. everybody. So great to, you know, great to see all the night, all the people. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. Great. What's next? Uh, I don't know. Do you have any well, safety uh, topics? Does, this week, does anybody have anything that would make us safer next week? Yeah. Do you guys have anything? I always have a safety mm, topic, but go for it. Yeah, I'll there's a reason for, for that. You're way safer yeah. than it, we are. That's your and job. That's my you job. Use, yes. Use Jack, uh, use, use Jack Sands. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> that was one of them of what I was going to suggest. Yes, always use jack stands, even when you uh, have a tiny plastic car and you actually just lift up the car and put it on top of the jack, which is what he started to do. Because understand the I concept, understand the concept that that's the jack is supposed to jack up the car. Anyway, this week's safety topic uh, is all about ergonomics and thinking about where your body is supposed, where it is going and where it's supposed to be and what you're doing and when you're putting it into weird positions. Uh, so I challenge you to think about where, what you're doing with your body, uh, especially, I mean, working on cars is an easy one. There's so many times when you're in a position, you're just like, this is not, not even like ergonomically correct, but like you could probably hurt yourself by doing this thing. So, um, yeah, figure out if you can do it a better way because we all probably know, uh, and all of you listeners probably already know and have hurt something from doing something stupid. Uh, you hurt your back because you pulled some two liters out of the back of your Mazda been there, done that. Yeah. So, and it's, it's um, not even, it's not even doing something stupid as you get older, like just getting in your race car sneezing crawling out of bed these are things that can throw your back out Sneeze, sneezing sneezing and ribs are not a good combination by the way i've, I've been there no. i know no. so yeah that's my that's our safety topic of the week all right 
Oh, we lost Chris again Bye. at the end of the show. Did he just say, that's it? Bye. Screw you guys. No real. Yeah, uh, no mic real... drop. Boom. Wait, I'm not getting a real. Wait for the little, uh, wait for the the little ding ding. <laughs> and thanks for downloading us. We are. Okay. No, he was gone. I didn't know if that would work or not. Um, He's back. Yeah. I think. Welcome back. Uh, okay, great. So next Thanks. week, you know, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe we talk about an HBR hangover. Maybe we talk about an NCM preview. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we talk mm -hmm. about something completely oh, different. I don't goodness. know. We, we got ideas? Anybody, anybody thinking? No? Yeah. We'll figure We're all out. thinking, but we still have a week to figure it out. So we'll be there. I mean, I mean, the butt, right, the butt is right around the corner, too. The butt's always <sighs> right around the corner, baby. There's, there's a race every week in September. So everybody's everybody's thinking about the butt always. <laughs> <laughs> it does relate to the sinkhole. So track, what we though. will do is we are going to link uh, last year's High Plains preview show so you can do the virtual track walk. That oh, is in our show wonderful. notes. So if you need to listen to that on your way to the HPR and if you see me, come say hi. Uh, Chris, I did have a guy come up to me and say, Hey, uh, you're mental, right? So I talked to Chris and he said that you would have stickers, which I did. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, I'm good. Yes. Cause I figured, right. Cause I was like, Tyler oh, was asking me any. and I was like, I didn't bring any. Sorry. Oh man. Yeah. I'm sorry, Tyler. You should have come. Yeah. I had to talk to Tyler I've like four times. I didn't give him any, I, maybe I had no. some, I don't know. But yeah. I've got a care package already made and addressed to Tyler that Thanks. I'm sending to you. Awesome. That's the E1R swag. All right. So, sorry, Tyler. Good. We got you. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Then Good here, show. We, here we go to the, yes, I updated the intro, but I didn't update this. I'm sorry. Thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you will join us in the world of driving, racing, building, because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. You can go to iTunes, give us a five-star rating. Even if you hated us, give us five stars and tell us why. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop us a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can still text pictures of your junk to me at 484-243-0455. Find us on Instagram at everyone.racers, YouTube and Facebook under Everyone Racers, and even Reddit at slash E1R. Thanks again. Until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless, like us, there is no shiny side, then just keep those wheels down.